Welcome to this transpose function tutorial. It's the transpose function within Excel. And basically, it's a function that will enable you to change data that is horizontal to data that is vertical. Have a look at what I mean here. If you look at the data tab, you can see I've got lots of extra data here. Let's just tidy up a little bit here. There we go. Name, city, favorite, color, phone, etc. All of this information is in row headers, and I really want them to be in column headers. So how do I go about it? Well, there's a couple of ways doing this. I've also got another video showing how to do this with the offset function, so please have a look at that one. So this is how you'd use it with the transpose function. So I've got a transpose one here, so what we basically need to do is just to work out um, you know, how many rows down and how many rows across that you're going to use or you're going to need for your, your data. So for instance, what normally you would do with the transpose function is count down. So as I one down to eight, so that'll be eight columns across when we select it. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's ten across that way. Brilliant. So I remember that. So when we go to transpose, it's eight columns across, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then ten down. And then that's where I put our transpose function in. So if I just zoom in so you can see this and what the function is. So I'll type in equals transpose, open bracket. That's great. And then I'm going to go back to data and then select my data like so. There we go. And I can see it appearing at the top. Close off my bracket. You can see that's here at the top. Make sure I close my bracket off. And then it's an array function. So to finish that, I hold down control, shift, and enter and then I can see my data let's just zoom back here so you can see so I can see my data here it's all there it looks all nice but there's a couple of problems the first problem is that I've got these zeros here so these zeros appear I'll just move myself down out of the way that's it these zeros appear is because on the data here I've got original data they're blank I haven't put in an age here for Fred or the favorite superhero for Charlie and that being the case, on this sheet, it comes up as a zero. The other thing as well is if I go into data here and I add in an extra one down here, so say, for instance, uh, I, I would say, for instance, uh, school, you know, Eton, uh, primary, um, grammar, you know, something like that. Um, you would type it in there. I don't know that's how you spell grammar, but you get the idea. But when you go back to transpose, uh, it doesn't include it in here, and we maybe want to include that data. So how do we get over this hurdle? Well, the way you do that is by adding a nested if statement inside the transpose function. So how do I do that? So that being the case, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight A, and we're going to go across to, let's do down to a couple of columns here, that'll do. It's going to go up to the top where the transpose function is. Notice when I click on the transpose fun function, let's just zoom in so you can see that those little um, uh, curly brackets disappear. So let's just write the if part of the function. So it's if that data, notice if that there is equal to blank, then put a blank in. Yeah? Uh, otherwise, put the data in a1 to j. Uh, eight and close it off. Now we're almost ready here, but of course we don't want it just to be to cell J8. We want it to take into account many other cells to expand the range. So I can think of no way bigger than to put something like ZZ80 to, I'm going to put it on the other side as well, ZZ80. So it'll be to column ZZ, row 80. So remember this is a array function so to finish the function we double down control shift and enter and that's great so let me just zoom back so now if you look at the data now you can see that I have a function in J but it's blank so what I can do is if I go back to my data I can start adding in extra bits of information here so um, fair tourist attraction you know, and that's it, you know. So let's say Shard, the Tower of London, um, Two Swords, that type of thing. And when I go back to Transpose, I can see it already includes it there. So let's just have a quick recap 
What I've just done here is if I just zoom in on the actual function, I've done the transpose function as normal, but in this part I've put in a nested if statement. So I put in a nested if to check to see if any of those cells, if they're blank, put in a blank. Otherwise, do the data there. Now there is another way of doing that with the offset function, and in fact in that func in that uh, tutorial I said I was working on it, and I found the answer very quickly. So I decided just to put this answer up straight away. So if you want to see how you do this with the offset function, and a couple of other nested functions, then you can do that way as well. Please give this a thumbs up if you've got anything out of this. Uh, subscribe so you don't miss any other uh, videos. We're looking to get one on Visio. Uh, and in particular, particularly using the master pages or the background pages, adding page numbers, etc. So please subscribe if you have Visio and you just want to get something out of that. Thank you so much for watching.